hypercars have become a dime a dozen, as long as that dime is made Californium. So how do you stand out in the hypercar hypercrowd? With the Hyperion XP1 powered by hydrogen. One way or another, how we power cars in the future is going to change. But what that will look like is far from a settled case, at least not to companies like Hyperion, that hope to bring hydrogen to the forefront. To prove the power of hydrogen, Hyperion is producing a hypercar that combines crazy performance numbers with crazy efficiency, hoping to give us a glimpse of the future. It seems like the only thing that pops up as often as a new hypercar with astronomical numbers is a new auto manufacturer startup. After the Silicon Valley-based Tesla upended the car industry by bringing the electric car to the forefront, there have been a bunch of other brand new car makers looking to make green in the world of green cars. Rivian, Lordstown, and Bollinger are all rushing to compete with the Tesla Cybertruck for those who don't want an electric pickup truck that doesn't look like what contractors drive in Blade Runner. New companies like Aspark and old companies like Lotus are making electric hypercars. With all this action, it's hard to stand out, but another California startup thinks it has what it takes to separate very rich people from a lot of cash for a spectacular car. The XP1 from Hyperion has the kind of numbers to run with the big dogs. 60 miles an hour comes on from a dead stop in 2.2 seconds and the car doesn't stop accelerating until it reaches 221 miles per hour. Those are pretty crazy numbers, but they're not exactly unheard of. A Tesla Model S performance can make the sprint to 60 in 2.3 seconds, and hypercars have been besting 220 miles per hour since the 1990s. The Jaguar XJ220 aspired for 220, but fell short by 8 miles per hour. But a little project by a man who created some of the most innovative race cars ever made changed the world of hypercars, arguably creating the distinction with the McLaren F1 that started at over 230 miles per hour. So if hitting 60 in less than 3 seconds and gobbling miles at a rate of almost 4 a minute isn't enough to grab attention in this hypercar-saturated world, what can? How about a car that can go a thousand miles in one fill and whose only byproduct is water vapor? Those are hard numbers to beat. For the amazing Porsche 918 to get 70 miles per gallon, it had to deploy a hybrid powertrain and definitely not use all of that car's 887 horsepower. But even a hybrid uses gas some or most of the time and that produces CO2. The Tesla Cybertruck, aside from looking like someone from a design class did his project on the way to class, gets 500 miles in its highest trim, the Lotus Avia. Lotus's almost 2,000 horsepower electric hypercar can manage a respectable 250 mile range. So how does the XP1 deliver check flapping performance with a road trip friendly range? By utilizing the most abundant element in the universe, hydrogen. With all the attention given to the rise of electric cars, you'd be forgiven for not knowing that the future of how cars are powered is not a settled issue. But while Tesla and their newly formed competitors have been grabbing all the 21st century headlines, companies like BMW and Toyota have been utilizing hydrogen to power select vehicles since the 1990s with cars like the BMW Hydrogen 7 and the Toyota Miria. There are a lot of advantages hydrogen has over battery electric power. It takes less than five minutes to fill an XP1 to capacity. Heavy use doesn't cause it to heat up like lithium batteries, something that can force an electric car to limit its power. Likewise, cold weather doesn't drain the car's power. In fact, since hydrogen has to be condensed, they almost work better in the cold. With fast fueling times and no overheating, there's another place where hydrogen cars can shine. While it might not seem like it today, racing was created to prove the concept of cars. Races like the Indianapolis 500 and 24 Hours of Le Mans were meant to showcase how durable cars were and have brought innovations as simple as the rear view mirror, seat belts, superchargers, and front wheel drive. Le Mans has spent the 21st century racing fast diesels and hybrid cars. Their new regulations for the coming year allow for production-based hypercars and has favored innovation. With the kind of range a hydrogen car can have on a single charge, the XP1 would be a game changer. That's if they can make the tank safe enough for racing incidents. These attributes have led BMW and Toyota, as well as a few others, to bet on hydrogen being the fuel of the future, and Hyperion agrees.
Hyperion is a California startup headed by Angelo Cafenteris that has three divisions. One for aerospace, where hydrogen power is already the norm, and one is Hyperion Energy, which seeks to build a hydrogen power infrastructure. Cafenteris figures the best way to build a hydrogen infrastructure is to create hydrogen customers. Since his previous gig was dreaming up sweet Hot Wheels as Mattel's Innovation Group manager, naturally he felt the best way to go about that was to create an incredible hypercar for 300 well-heeled lucky buyers. Creating an exclusive car to create a market for your new power source isn't as crazy as it sounds. Before Tesla started making sci-fi trucks and mid-size electrics for the masses, they were building on Lotus Elise platforms, creating the limited Tesla Roadster. The impact of the Tesla Roadster should not be underestimated. The electric car goes all the way back to the first cars, when just like now, there was a race to determine what would fuel cars before liquid dinosaurs won the day. Even the first hybrid car dates all the way back to one designed by Dr. Ferdinand Porsche for coach builder Jacob Lohner. That car was made in 1900. Electric cars have been plagued by two things, range and speed. To overcome those, they had deployed some less than enticing results. Even the carved soap look of GM's EV1 wasn't enough to give the car more than a 40-mile range. But it wasn't just the range of the Roadster that came courtesy of the lithium batteries. It was the fact that this electric car was a sports car. For the first time, electric was sold as a performance car. More importantly, hand-in-hand -hand with promoting the car, Tesla's On the Road allowed the creation of the Tesla Supercharger Network. And that is exactly what Cafenteris has in mind. Cafenteris and Hyperion don't view themselves as a car company. They view themselves as an energy company. Despite hydrogen's head start, they've fallen behind in the infrastructure game as companies like Tesla, Volkswagen, and Ford build nationwide charging station networks for their electric cars. Hydrogen has been limited to Southern California, where Toyota and BMW have been leasing test models. Hyperion is looking not only to change the profile of hydrogen cars, but the access to hydrogen in general. Hydrogen power works similar to a battery, except that the power is generated on the spot. Hydrogen is fed from the tank to the fuel cell, where it's mixed with oxygen. The resulting action creates heat and water vapor that then goes to a supercapacitor that feeds the electric motors. Since it's a fuel, not a battery, it refills faster. And unlike batteries, if you want to go twice as far, you just make a tank twice as big. The other big advantage hydrogen has over battery electric vehicles is that they don't need rare earth metals like modern electric cars. The mining of those metals tends to offset a lot of the environmental advantage of an electric car. So with all these advantages, why aren't we all driving around hydrogen cars already? Hydrogen has a few hurdles to clear before it can become the fuel du jour of the future and not just the Betamax of car fuel. One of those is hydrogen's low density. One of the things that gave gasoline its leg up in the fuel wars was its high energy density. You could get a lot out of a little bit, enough to make carrying a few gallons all you need to cover a few hundred miles. To get that out of hydrogen, it has to be stored under pressure. That means that the tank has to be built to hold that kind of pressure. Hydrogen has another property that contributed to one of the first disasters that was broadcast to the world in real time. The Hindenburg disaster occurred when the hydrogen that kept it afloat caught fire, quickly burning the vessel. Since flammability is a property it shares with gasoline, fuel cell technology is already there. But in order to make it work for hydrogen cars, it's prohibitively expensive. It's so expensive that BMW and Toyota haven't been selling their cars, but leasing them largely at a loss. The Toyota's Mirius $400 a month lease price undersells the expense of the hydrogen car. It's a price that Toyota won't even reveal. But BMW noted that hydrogen stacks cost 80,000 euros and need to be around 10,000 euros to be marketable. This is another advantage of the XP1. For Toyota buyers or BMW 7 Series buyers, cost can be a factor. Why spend twice as much for a 7 Series that you can only fill up in the Los Angeles area? Hypercars by their very nature are a price is no issue proposition. The Lotus Evia rings in at $2.3 million. While Hyperion hasn't released pricing info on the XP1, there are two things that are sure. 
it will be very, very expensive, and the price will still not reflect how much it costs to build its 1,000-mile range fuel cell. Building that hydrogen network has its own hurdles, though. Hydrogen is difficult to transport and difficult to separate. Right now, there are two methods. The first is to get hydrogen from water, which can be done with solar power but is very expensive. The other is to get it from methane or natural gas, which is cheaper but in the end produces more CO2 than if you just poured liquefied Barney in your tank, sort of defeating the purpose. So companies like Hyperion are left with the task of scaling not only the network but the manufacture of hydrogen in order to make it cost-effective and clean. For the time being, hydrogen is the second place runner for the fuel of the future, but if a car is going to be a niche car, it might as well be as sexy and cool as the XP1. What do you think? Is the XP1 just what hydrogen needs to take the lead as the fuel of the future? Let us know in the comments, and while you're there, be sure to subscribe to the richest for the latest videos in your inbox. Thanks for watching.